Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today we're just going to go through some mail that, kind of, that came in. <clears throat> the reason I want to do that is because there are a couple of projects that I have coming up immediately that depend on what's in this mail. So I want to get it out of the way. So we'll just do a quick, uh, quick mail and maybe have some discussion about tools. Okay, you want to know something that I find annoying? Uh, I find this annoying. I look at, put that in the comments, what you think about a page like this. Now this page was just, you know, one blank page. Well, it's not blank. That's one of the things that bugs me about it. In a document that has several pages following this. So I, I just put that, if you can, in the comments, what you think of this. Uh, this, in, this page intentionally left blank, but <clears throat> yeah, anyway. Okay. So I've been going about, uh, you know, I get these parcels in and what I do is I go, I put the, get markers out and I mark off all the address information and everything like that. And it just dawned on me the other day, well, actually it dawned on my wife and she saw me doing that and she said, why don't you just turn it over? So from now on, that's what, I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn these things over and, and not waste my time using up markers. Okay, so I know what this one is. I'm excited about this one. I don't want to cut into the box in there. But this is, just from the, the feel of it and the size of it, this is my Zewi digital oscilloscope. This is the uh, DSO 3D12, I believe. Um, should I open it now? Should I open it now? Or should I leave it to the... Well, we'll do a proper unboxing at the other one, but at, at, because of this here, I just want to make sure that nothing inside got squished. We'll have a quick look in there. Okay, comes with a manual. That's uh, better than a lot of uh, little cheap scopes that come from China. The two probes. These are your typical 6100s, 100 megahertz probes. Well, they're only 100 megahertz probes. Is the other one a 100 megahertz probe too? It's supposed to be a 120 megahertz scope. Yeah, it's a 100 megahertz probe too. Okay, well, we've got two of them. That's nice. I see some of these things uh, recently uh, from Finercy and all those, they'll, they'll sell you a two channel scope but only give you one probe. So that's a plus in the favor here. There's the scope itself. Yeah, everything looks like it's properly protected. So I don't suppose this would have caused any damage to the unit itself. No, it looks pretty. Okay, we'll, we'll reserve the rest of the unboxing for the uh, video on this, which should be either the next video or the video after that. All right. Can't wait to play with that one though. Okay, the next one here. The only people who send me things via DHL are PCB Ray. So these, these must be the boards for my uh, real world control project, my little MOSFET, power MOSFET board. I want to see something here. I'll get into these a little bit more in the video. It'll probably be the next video I'll do this. Yeah, you notice that there? That was the result of uh, cutting a cabbage. It cut back. Okay. Ah, good. So the keep out work for the, the power transistor or for the MOSFET, power MOSFET. So yeah, we'll I think I'll do the, my next video on this because I want this is another project I want to do with PCB Ways help as well. Okay, so here's the the regular stuff, sort of. I think I know what this is. It's been a while since I had one of these, but they're handy to have. So this is a a a, a Stadler Mars eraser pencil. It's got a an eraser on this end, a brush on this end, and they're actually really, really good for, for uh, cleaning off board edge connectors. So if you've got a, a board like this, it needs to go into a, an edge connector. These things, you see how it polishes that up just beautifully. And you know, they can be quite tarnished. 
and uh, this little thing, this dandy little device here will, will clean it up really, really well. They're good to have around. They're expensive as heck, but they're good to have around. I think uh, this, this is $4 or something like that shipped. So yeah, kind of expensive. If anybody knows where I can get these cheaper than that, let me know. I got this off of AliExpress. Happened to be buying some other stuff and I needed to get over the $10 mark to get free shipping. So it really, you know, if you, if you think about it that way, I think I was up to about $3 shipping and then this tipped me over that point. So it really only cost me a buck to get it. But I'm glad, uh, like I said, it's been a while since I had one of these and I miss it. So I'm gonna try and keep one in stock from now on. Oh, I think I know what this is too. I'm, they're easy to guess this time. I think these are soldering iron elements, yeah. So I, I remember mentioning before in a video that uh, I, what I tend to do is, uh, you know, I'll get involved, I'll go over there to my soldering bench, which is over that way, and I'll, I'll start to solder up something, and I'll bring it back over here, and I'll run some experiments, and I'll go back over there, and back and forth, and back and forth, and then, you know, time will, will, will pass, and I'll forget that I left the iron on, and, uh, you know, once you do that a uh, half dozen times, then, you know, the, the elements tend to burn out. So uh, I pick up extra ones and I sold them into the irons and continue on as though life was normal around here. And these are handy to have. I, I'll leave a link to them down below. I don't know if you guys use the old Heiko style irons. I do. I don't have one of those modern T-series irons. I guess I should get one because, uh, you know, they, they kind of put themselves to sleep if they're not being used. But uh, I, then I'll have to come up with, a, you know, it will be a skill I have to learn. It'll be a learning curve. I'm sure it'd be a fairly short one. Anyway, these are handy to have. I I usually keep a couple of them around anyway, so. Okay. I know what this one is too. This one's a little uh, a little flush cutter. Let me, I, I think I have the more flush cutters over here. Hold on a sec. Yeah, this too, okay, this doesn't quite come apart as easily. Oh yeah. Surprised these actually survived the shipping. So I've got some more flush cutters here. These are just the standard ones. You see them around a lot. Now, <clears throat> what I do for flush cutters is obviously I have I have ones like this. Use the last ones I got. But these, uh, you know, one of the things about these are very cheaply made, right? So they're just uh, half hard stamped metal with a, a rivet in them. A couple of things happen to them. The jaws get, I don't know if you can see it on this one, but you know, the jaws are kind of getting chewed up on this and you know there's a bit of a gap in there and uh the fulcrum here the the uh pivot wears out so they get really really sloppy after a short while it's a good thing they're really cheap i think i generally pay two or three dollars a piece for these and what i normally use what i normally use for component leads but only for component leads are these um these arum they're swiss made the arum 775e and these are these are extraordinarily old. These ones here, these are decades old. Uh, but uh, they're, they're all extremely expensive. I think I I didn't pay that much back when I bought these, but I think they're they're pushing a hundred dollars now, if if not more. So they're they're very expensive, but they're very very nice. They're they're compact. There's compact little head on them. Like it's it's it's, it's a smaller head than on these things. It gets in really tight and does a great job of flush cutting. But I'm very, very careful not to use it on anything other than soft component leads. That's where these come in. So for anything tougher than a regular component lead, I'll use these things. These little short ones, I haven't had a pair of these in a long time, but these are really handy for getting into tight places. So that's, this is my combination here. I got these, these things here, which I treat very, very nicely, and they do a very, very nice job for me. They're, they're, these are wonderfully made. I mean, uh, I put a drop of oil maybe once a decade in there, and that's that's usually enough. These can come apart for cleaning. They can come apart for sharpening. These can actually be sharpened. They have a profile on them that allows them to be sharpened. I don't know anybody around here who can sharpen them, but uh, I've never needed it in, in all the time I've had them. Um, but these things, like I say, like this this pair here is, is almost gone. It's maybe about a year old. And it, it's beginning to get, you know, the jaws, they wear, so the jaws go flip-flop and you get, because it's not very, very hard metal, you get all sorts of little gouges and stuff in them. And I do abuse them. I use them for anything that I don't want to use this for. 
And so I, I, I keep a supply of them around. So I've got these ones in. But that's, to me, that's, uh, I've got to do that. I've got to have something that work, works really well, regardless. And then I have to have something I can abuse. So that's why I, that's why I have my selection of flush cutters. Okay, so put those out of the way. And I've only got one more little parcel to show you here. And uh, I think I know what this one is too. I think this is a USB-C panel mount sockets, if I'm not mistaken. Because I remember the AliExpress telling me it got shipped with those pliers. Oh, and indeed it did. Oh, come here. Thanks for you know, I think they use more in shipping material than the products are worth. <laughs> These things here, which are easily broken, are just thrown into a thin envelope. These things, which you'd have to try really hard to do any damage to at all, are wrapped up and then taped with about two feet of tape. Leaves me scratching my head. It's like that sheet of paper there with the writing on it. This page intentionally left blank. Okay, so what these I got these for is to you know for little things, little projects that require some USB power. I don't want to put a battery in them, but I do want to be able to put five volts into them. So I got these. Now all they do is they'll only supply the five volts. You can get other ones that'll supply the five volts and the data, um, but they won't. Uh, you won't get all the USB C signals. You just get uh, power and data. These are really cheap, but I think they're going to be really handy. I have uh, way over there on the, uh, my other bench over there. I have uh, an Altar 8800 clone. Well, not clone. It's kind of a, a a modern reconstruction of it. And I'm going to use this to get uh, power into a little board I have in there, which now I have a, a cable running through a hole, but. I'll put this in the hole and I'll make it a nice little connection. So my, that's my first project for this. And I'm really excited about this. So yeah, look out for the video on this coming up. As I, there was a question I want to ask you, because you are the audience. I could just do a quick single video run through on this. Or I could do like a three part series and get into it a lot. Uh, first I'll run through the basics of the item. I'll, I'll unbox it, I'll look at the documentation, then I'll just maybe take it apart and have a look inside it. And the next one, I'll look at the oscilloscope in detail. And then the next one, I'll look at the digital multimeter and the function generator. Thanks for coming out, guys. Let me know what you want me to do about this. Let me know what you think about that sheet of paper. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend. Bye.